Hi, welcome back. This is Hava Mahler. I am a practitioner of Chinese medicine, a life coach, and an expert in traditional Chinese astrology. And uh, today I'm not answering a specific question. I'm here to answer um, one of my uh, most frequently asked questions because I was asked twice already today. And that is how is it possible that you can have two people who are born on the same day um, in the same place, so theoretically the same energetic influence is uh, relevant to them, and they have completely different personalities. And the answer is very simple, it's genetics and upbringing. Um, so if you're aware at all of the um, research that's been done in the past several decades on the whole question of nature versus nurture, um, an awful lot of our personalities, of our attitudes, of our opinions is genetically based. Not necessarily that we're going to turn out exactly like one of our parents, but the number of things that are influenced by our genetics and by our epigenetics are huge. Influence does not necessarily mean one-to-one, -one, but that there is um, an effect of our genes. Um, and so things like whether you're going to be more introverted or more extroverted, uh, how likely you are to suffer from any number of mental illnesses, um, to be non-neurotypical in various ways. A lot of these, not 100%, are genetically influenced, as well as your personality, your big five personality traits, openness, extroversion, um, neuroticism, and the other two that fit into that acronym. Um, so when we say genetically based or influenced by genetics, uh, it looks like, based on studies that have been done, about 50% of our personality, you could somehow work out by analyzing your genes, if the science were good enough. Um, an awful lot of the rest is our upbringing. Um, you could be born into a time of year and an energy balance that is supposed to make you the most happy, confident person who feels of life that life is full of abundance. And if you grew up in poverty, if you grew up uh, in an area that's affected by war, then you might end up not feeling that way. You might end up very insecure and feeling the stockpile food. Um, and so our upbringing also has a huge effect on our personalities. This shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Um, and so the, the, the question of how much the astrology, how much the energy balance at the time of our birth influences us is not one that as far as I know people are doing research into. My wild off the cuff guess would be about 10%. We say that about 50% is genetics, that's what the research is showing. And upbringing is, seems to be a little less than that and the rest is who knows. So there's room for the who knows. Um, now the thing is that if I were to offer you, um, in order to understand someone that you have to set up a meeting with, uh, a potential client, uh, someone you want to go on a date with, a choice between a reading of the energy balance according to their date of birth, or a complete um, psychological profile on both of their parents and a complete history of their childhood and uh, a basic genetic analysis, you would probably get more information from the second one, assuming that we know how to read these things and understand how they all um, influence each other and what the interplay is. Um, it's an awful lot of work and often not possible to get that sort of breakdown on someone before you've met them or even after you've met them. Whereas the date of birth is generally something you know for your friends and family or um, you can just talk to them on Facebook if you've forgotten. And so even though the date of birth and the chart reading isn't going to give us a 100% breakdown of what's up with that person, it's going to give us a little bit of an edge when we want to communicate with them, when we want to try and reach out to them, we want to meet them where they're at. And it's going to give us a little bit more of an edge than anyone else has. So if you're trying to connect to a friend, to a relative, to a client, um, this isn't the be all and end all. <laughs> I'm not saying that, I mean, I would say that. And you definitely need to be able to work with people to read the room, to understand who's across from you as an individual and not as a chart or um, a set of uh, lines on a piece of paper. But 
there is a place for this. This information that I can provide can be very, very helpful. I know that it has saved relationships, including one of mine. Um, I know that people use it in their work. I know that people find it hugely, hugely effective. And I also know that it is not the be all and end all. And it is absolutely not true that people who are born at the same place at the same time will have the exact same personality, but there will be some similarities in the world that they were first exposed to and the world that they react to throughout their life. I have a friend who's a body language expert, and he told me once that we make our initial assessment of whether we like someone, how we feel about them, do we trust them, usually within seven to 21 seconds of meeting them because we trust their body language may, way more than anything that they're going to tell us about themselves afterwards. Um, and so, when we're born and we're first, to, first exposed to the world, that is our initial understanding of what we're up against. And that is something that we react to throughout our lives. Um, obviously, someone who was born um, with a very extroverted personality, and this is actually something they can test with babies by testing how sensitive they are to flavors. Uh, babies that are more sensitive to flavors are I believe if they're more sensitive to sweet, they're going to grow out to be extroverted. Um, so people who are more sensitive, who take in more positive experiences are more likely to be extroverted. They want to go out, they want to meet people because they're going to end up with more positive feedback. Whereas people who are more sensitive to negative feedback, sour things or bitter things are people who tend to be a little more introverted. They avoid spending as much time around others because they experience more negative feedback. This is ridiculous that they can test these things, but they can. So that is to a certain extent genetically based. But even if you have an extroverted baby and an introverted baby, if they are both born into a world where the energy is, is communicating to them, that world is a place that's full of abundance and it is just going to be there for you and have your back. So you should go out there and not worry too much about where you're go where your next meal is going to come from, then even though one might be more open to that message and one might be um, you know, might be taking that in with a grain of salt, they're still going to turn out very differently than two babies who are also one introverted and one extroverted, who are born at, say, the dead of winter when the message that they're getting is, okay, you have to hold on to all the resources that you have because there doesn't seem to be a lot out there. Um, so there, I hope that was helpful. I hope that cleared up um, that question. If you have any questions that you want me to answer about um, personalities, communication, relationship issues from a very unique perspective of uh, Chinese personality analysis, then feel free to leave a message below, email me, WhatsApp me, text me, Facebook, Instagram. I am not on TikTok. Um, but any other way of contacting people uh, should work. So take care and I hope you have a wonderful day.